the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all of what we've been talking about and my lack of enthusiasm about anything that they're putting out. This is sort of part of it. And a lot of it is, look, social justice runs the West right now from entertainment, from the entertainment. It runs it. It's what they care about. It's what they prioritize. And I think people have to understand what that means. It's not merely about, okay, well, they're going to have some like crazy, weird leftist storyline play out. That's not always the case. Sometimes it's just simple of what are you going into this creation with in mind? And oftentimes it's some sort of checkbox now, now, not oftentimes, let's say now, like in Marvel Cinematic Universe made it abundantly clear. Victoria Alonzo have said it, has said it. Kevin Feige, this is why they use the Eternals. He admit he admitted that because he thought they were obscure enough that people wouldn't get mad. That's why all of them are tokenized and, and really because those people that they appeal to don't know anything about the Eternals, they're not going to get as upset, though I'll call it out. But here's an example of that, and this is the what's happening with Shang-Chi, right? Now, yes, the actor, and let me say this, because I hadn't done any videos on him, I don't think. The actor is weird. It sounds like he's more focused on what, like, statement he can make, social statement that he can make with filling the role of Shang-Chi as opposed to just embodying who Shang-Chi was. Those are two different concepts, by the way. So he talks about, oh, look at all these, you know, these self-important actors and actresses. People can see me and all the Asian people can now feel like they can be be awesome because that's the only way Asian people like is anime not a thing or, or what? You know what I mean? Like doesn't that in itself in the existence of it, though, in Japan, prove that people can adopt something that can be created by depict a certain type of person or anything like that and be loved by folks of any race, demographic, creed, ethnic background or anything. But the actor like think that he's just doing something groundbreaking as if there isn't a whole fucking genre and hadn't been through the seventies, eighties and uh, whatnot that had been popular out West of martial arts movies and other things of other Asians that we've seen historically. I guess Jet Li, damn B Bruce Lee, Jet Li, uh, Jackie Chan, Danny Yen, like none of those guys are even a thing, I guess. We never saw those. Uh, but more importantly, the Asian folk, they could finally see themselves because of representation. Because Asian people don't like Hulk and, and all those guys. So Thor, like, because, you know, Thor's not Asian, right? <laughs> Another example of the direction that they're going in is right here. Right here. It just really shows everything of what I'm talking about. It's coming from the rap. Reviews are in. And critics call the superhero movie a triumph, a groundbreaking step of representation, a fiercely Asian American superhero film. Okay, let's let's come come here, come here, just just let's back up a little bit. Okay, not one time in how they define this movie do they say if it's any goddamn good. They never say if it's any good. It's it could check a box. Representation. Who the makeup is of the people that's getting it, who or, or that's in it. A fiercely Asian. You never told me is is the movie any fucking good? So you look at the article. We'll go through a little bit of it. But just that headline right there just goes to show who they're appealing to uh, and who these critics, what they are prioritizing. It's like, first you check the box and then we'll talk about what's going on in the movie and if they like it or if it's good. But first we have to make and notate the fact that there's representation. Looking at this here. The reviews for Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings, Marvel Studios' first solo superhero movie featuring an Asian lead. That's the first thing you lead with, right? And that's what, the, to be fair, that's what Marvel did with their promotional tours and their schemes and everything. That's the sort of communication that they had been having with the people that had the inside scoop. It's, hey, look at us, we're Asian. 
Along with passing ground action scenes in the film's first half, Tony Leung, I think that's how you say his name, villain Wen Wu uh, gets noticed for being one of Marvel's best MCU villains yet. If Marvel Studios has thus made slow process in developing slow adventures for its many superheroes of color... <laughs> Many superheroes of color, it, it takes another successful stride, if not quite as sizable as Black Panther with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. A film that built simultaneously on the lexicon of 50 years of Hong Kong action films. <laughs> 50 years, okay. Why are we talking about this then? Because we've seen it. A mostly decent Marvel movie built by Chris Kinetic Action in the Marvel Cinematic Universe best villain that comes from Slash film. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is a, gen a genuine triumph for Marvel Studios, a true family genre, drama with plenty of charm and a myriad of winning performances. Man, this doesn't sound bald and paid for at all. From the outstanding cast led by Simi Liu and Tony Leung, it opens a new world of possibilities for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and will hopefully... And we're hopefully leaving you dreaming of the countless mystical directions the Marvel or the story could be told next. Shang Chi certainly deserves credit as a groundbreaking step of representation. That's what uh, someone of the Observer, Oliver Jones, wrote. Here's another one from a uh, POC's culture. Wait, that's an actual thing? POCs? <laughs> so there's apparently some, I guess, brand or platform called POC Culture. Oh, my God. These guys. And, of course, they, they wrote saying, uh, Director Destin Daniel Cretton has created a film that is action-packed, emotionally satisfying, and surprisingly hilarious. Asian Americans can finally feel a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. See, these guys bore me to death. And I and I'm I'm not saying that this movie is trash. I don't really know. What I will say is that when I hear things like that, I think it's gonna be trash. If now, I don't take critics generally serious about what it is they say. But the fact that that's all these people are talking about and leading with is who it represents in the diversity aspect. You're telling me that it sucks. You're telling me that that's a that's a crutch. And it's trying to shield it from criticism. Like, again, you have the deranged leftist who's uh, playing Shang-Chi uh, is just fucking out of his mind. See. I'm going to give you, I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. I, I shouldn't even be telling y'all this. I should leave the secrets to me. So once my books and everything, we start to releasing those, uh, which has uh, these different characters that are going to be loved by its its customers. You know, you'll know why. Um, and I'll reap the benefits the most. So y'all can't beat me to the punch. But since we're almost, we're already at production cycle, I guess I can let y'all in on a little secret. You see? If you want to know why a lot of different types of characters that, let's say, are not traditionally straight white men. If you want to know why those characters hasn't haven't stuck around, it's because of what you're doing right now with Shang-Chi. And what is that, you might ask? It's that the story and the development of that character is secondary to that character's identity. White straight male characters don't have such a luxury and by luxury i mean it's not a luxury actually but what i'm meaning is is that and i've said this many times before the straight white male character has no social ill to rely on so the creators can only do one thing create a good or bad whatever that medium is comic book 
character, movie, whatever it is. That's all they have to fall back on. And yes, some have succeeded. But the reason why a lot of those have stuck around, it's not because they're white. It has nothing to do with it. It's because, well, it's not a social ill to fall back on. So it's never prioritized or never hyperemphasized. But how do modern era comic book creators, uh, live action depictions and stuff, definitely nowadays, it wasn't as bad like in the 90s and the 2000s. It wasn't as bad. Now it's terrible, right? You have a black character. What happens? It's predictable. They have to have some sort of struggle with their race. So it's, it's to be anticipated. You have a white character, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, like a lesbian character. What do ha- they have to have a struggle with? Of course, their sexuality is predictable. You have a female character. What do they have to struggle with? They're, uh, some sort of uh, them being doubted or something because they're a female. It's, it's rinse and repeat because they worry about the box checking and then to shield itself from any of its criticism, they this is giving me Captain Marvel vibes. It's, well, you're a sexist misogynist if you don't like this. You're racist against Asians if you don't like. It's the same shit. Because they're so hell-bent on representation. And I'll end on this note right now. It's yet again the insulting thing. Is that they act like people that are Asian in this case, same with black characters or black people, rather. They act as if you can't find some sort of relatability outside of race or ethnic background, which is insulting. My favorite character is Batman. I'm not white and rich. Don't want to be. Well, I don't want to be white. I want to be rich. (laughs) I love to be Bruce Wayne rich. Favorite character growing up was Flash. He was fast. I was fast as a kid. Really, that's it, right? That's what got me intrigued on the character, that there's a character whose one thing that he did, his power that he was known for, was running very fast. thought that was cool. Now, when I became more competent and cared more about story, it became Batman. All these people who like anime characters, who couldn't look anything further from him, from them. Like these guys are living in a fucking la la land where they think that in order for us to feel some sort of relatability is that we have to focus on the ethnic background or rather the ethnic or racial makeup of that character that you're using. Not understanding that a lot of these characters that are on my wall have fans, for example, and supporters, customers that are black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever. Latino. They're not doing anything groundbreaking. However, what they are doing it is a disservice to the characters that they are in control of. Right. Well, you're telling us exactly why you're doing what it is that you're doing. It's not based on merit. It's because you want to check a box. And that always makes for bad art. It always does. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.